Okay, commissioners, we are live. We'll call this March 21st meeting of the uh, Riley County Commission to order. Please, everybody, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, at least by the calendar, spring is officially here. I don't think Mother Nature got the uh, memo, though, but that's okay. I see some mixture of rain and possibly snow, snow on Sunday, Monday, if the thunderstorms. 1 a.m., we are in Kansas. We need moisture. We do need moisture. I agree. I agree. So, and uh, yeah, thunderstorm rolled through last night. Yeah, it sounded like. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> Was that more the sounds of freedom? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I didn't catch yeah, that. They were last night. They were active. Oh, okay. I must have slept through that. That was you good. Could. I never sleep through. That. I know you usually don't either. But I, like I said, I I had a couple of couple long couple of days. So okay. Well, we'll start off right. with some public comment as we typically do. Has anybody got anything of interest this morning? No. Silent from the. Sign up from the gallery. I don't see anybody up on Zoom. In fact, I don't see us up on Zoom. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Guess we'll have to go with that. Um, okay. We'll close off public comment and we'll uh, move on to uh, commission comments. Commissioner McKinley. All right. Um, well, yesterday was the uh, Juvenile Center meeting. They Quarterly, we move it around. It was out in Lincoln uh, yesterday. Um, usually, it's a quick drive down in Junction City. It's, but I've never been out to Lincoln. It's a nice little town. Mm -hmm. uh, the biggest discussion was regarding the schooling for the youth that are uh, in there. The local school board, 475, has decided that after this year, they're not going to provide teachers for the facilities. And uh, they receive state funding based on the numbers. Actually, you get double pay on some of them because they're intentions. But they said it's not enough. We're um, board agreed we're hiring, we'll get hiring the legal to correct because it it seems to be a state law that they have to do it. But they're balking. Luckily, first when first they brought it up, I don't think that right now they quit. But now they're saying it's a year, so we've got it some time to work with them to get them straightened out. Um, also had election of officers, the existing ones agreed to go on forward. So my name didn't pop up any place. That was good. <laughs> That's all I've got. Okay. <clears throat> okay, well, let's see. Tuesday, I was an observer at the courthouse during the jury selection for a trial. Uh, Judge Bannister had invited us to come and witness the facility uh, when two large trials uh, were in the selection process. In the other courtroom, however, the defendant had pleaded uh, had pleaded out, so they canceled the, the trial. So it wasn't quite a, the congestion that would have been there. Um, it was still really full, with standing room only, with all the jurors in the hallway and people. Um, so I was able to sit in on several hours of the jury selection process, which was really interesting. You know, all the questions that are asked, and uh, so I plan to go back at another time when there's you know, more, more of the congestion. So um, Wednesday, I went over to today's documents and emails. I did have a discussion um, by phone with one of the Keats residents that's been working on the webpage. And um, there was a meeting of the small group on Tuesday, but they didn't let me know until the afternoon before, and I wasn't able to get there. So, um, so I got some follow-up on that. Um, and then I followed up with Shelley and Clancy on some questions that they have concerning the contract that we did with, with the homeowners. Um, then yesterday evening, I practiced with the bell choir and getting ready for Easter, and later attended a Latin service at the church. So, so we have. Okay. Well, as for me, post meeting on Monday, I um, attended the uh, Kansas Employment Exploration Program. Uh, two are hosted by the Manhattan Area Chamber of Commerce. Uh, was part of a local public sector panel discussion after their lunch program uh, representing Riley County with about 30 or so transitioning soldiers 
uh, from Fort Riley. So I had the opportunity to explain what Riley County does, some of the potential job opportunities available and the cultures and benefits of working here. Um, there were several other tours and presentations, including K-State <clears throat> and some other businesses from around the area that they toured throughout the day. And, um, um, good working program. Um, I hope that's something that continued to do. Uh, Monday afternoon, there was also a March uh, meeting of the Riley County Law Board for those part of that other tour. I didn't able, wasn't able to attend. Thought I would just give a short uh, update um, just off the agenda. Um, after approval of the uh, consent agenda, there was an update from the Fraternal Order of Police Lodge 17, um, some just general law board comments, several presentations of uh, life-saving awards uh, for efforts, uh, proclamation for National Public Safety Telecommunications Week, an update from the Community Advisory Board, um, discussions on the license plate reader agreement, um, analysis from Fake Patty's Day 2024. Um, I'm sure that was a really good conversation. Processes for issuing citations to businesses found in violation of liquor laws. I'm sure that brought about some discussion. And a discussion on the crime reduction plan. It's still kind of in its primitive state, so there'll, there'll be plenty more on that. Not sure if they had any executive sessions on anything. Um, so I can't really, uh, can't really present anything on that. Tuesday afternoon, had the monthly uh, board of directors meeting with Manhattan Area Chamber of Commerce. Um, after approval of the agenda and the consent agenda, which included the minutes and financials from 5 February, update on those, their membership accounts. We had an update on the Beyond Tomorrow downtown plan from staff from the city of Manhattan. Um, we had a uh, diversity and equity inclusion board committee update. Uh, discussions on the economic development strategic plan. Um, I'm part of that group. Um, right now, we're just in the midst of trying to do interviews and um, get the various data put together for that. And um, we talked to um, discuss some of this city of Manhattan's upcoming potential sales tax initiatives. Um, brought about quite the discussion. Uh, chamber staff uh, gave their usual staff updates and kind of reported on everything that they were working on. Tuesday evening, watch K State lose in the first round of the NIT tournament. A game they were never really in, really to start with. It was quick out of the gate, and they were down like nine to three, and they scratched and clawed and did what they could. But they ended the season at nineteen and fifteen. I, I mean, could have been worse. Um, be interesting to see how things kind of go in the off season here. If I think they keep the core of everybody together. I think we're in a good shape moving forward. I, I really do. It just, I think we're just a little short this year on talent in a couple of places that we really needed it, but we did okay. Uh, Wednesday afternoon, attended the March meeting of the Flint Hills uh, Metropolitan Organization. Uh, after getting the financial update from um, staff, um, gave an update on some other things, including uh, projects they're working on for both 2024 and moving into 2025. Discussion on a potential carbon reduction plan. Um, there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff following for that. Uh, City of Amigos working on a sidewalk master plan. Uh, an update to the Connect 40 plan um, is well in progress. KDOT then provided an update. Did mention some um, citizen concerns out on the uh, 77 corridor in regards to that. Uh, we followed up with several action items, including uh, approval of the January minutes. Approval of Amendment Number Two to the Transportation Improvement Plan, as well as Amendment Two to the Unified Planning Work Program. Uh, we also discussed some transit performance measures, some preservation performance measures, and uh, had a pretty good discussion on local population trends, uh, both in the present and moving forward. In fact, I'm going to have Jared email me uh, the slides from that because I think that's really useful information to look at when planning for quite a bit of things. Um, we did discuss uh, potential for a uh, U.S. 24 corridor study that's in play as well. Uh, and this morning, attended a Good Morning Manhattan, hosted by the Manhattan Area Chamber of Commerce. Guest speaker was uh, Jimmy Morris Gardeman from the Manhattan Board of uh, Education, uh, USD 383, just talking about the school district. That's all I've got. Chairman Ford, you okay if I kind of rapid fire through this? It's it's rapid fire time. through this, yes. Okay, first I'm going to need a motion to approve low bid submitted by Wellborn Sales Income Salina to supply of corrugated metal pipe and bands in the amount of 29,000 for Okay, I would make a motion to approve the staff recommendations for the bid submitted by Wellborn Sales Inc. of Salina 
Four corrugated metal pipe and bands for a little bid of $29,404.10. I'll second. Okay. They moved and seconded and, um, to approve the staff recommendation for the bid submitted by Wilmore Sales, Solana, Kansas. <clears throat> Supply corrugated metal pipe and bands for a little bid of $29,404.10. All in favor? Aye. Need a motion to approve low bid submitted by buyer construction company in Manhattan, Kansas for crushed washed limestone chips in the amount of $35.77 per ton for $1,700 ton in the amount of $60,809. Uh, move to approve the, uh, approve <clears throat> the crushed limestone chips uh, to buyer construction for the $35.77 per ton. Who is second that? Okay. It moved and seconded to approve the staff recommendation for the crushed limestone chips to buy a construction company to supply crushed limestone chips for the bid amount of $35.77 per ton. All in favor? All right. Bye. Aye. Moved to accept Sean Lindenberger's resignation and appoint Dwayne Sherwood as Manhattan Township trustee. Okay. Um, I I would make a motion to accept Sean Lindenberger's re resignation at a point that Dwayne or Diane or Dwayne, 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 Dwayne Sherwood. Dwayne Sherwood as Manhattan Township trustee. Second. We moved and seconded to accept Sean Lindenberger's resignation and appoint Dwayne Sherwood as Manhattan Township trustee. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I've never seen it spelled like that before. Yeah, he was a trustee before. He's been around forever. Yeah. He's a Okay. Township member, even when I was oh, okay. way back in the day. Uh, moved to approve contract agreement with Ebert Construction Inc. for parallel road culvert replacement, the amount of $285,323.14. Estimated project completion, 18 working days. Start date is for July 15, 2024. Sales tax funded project. Moved to assign and approve the contract from Ebert Construction, the amount of $285,323.14 for the uh, Parallel road culvert replacement. I would second that. Okay, we have decided to approve the contracts from Ebert Construction Company in the amount of $285,323.14 for the parallel road culvert replacement project. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair, please sign. Next, uh, Raleigh County Employee Action Forms. Thomas Ryan, new hire, volunteer firefighter stipend, uh, fire, uh, Raleigh County Fire District Number One. Scott Cassie, facilities and ground tech two, public works separation service. Rolando Anya, uh, new hire, facilities and ground tech one, public works department, and Antonio Castillo, uh, new hire, deputy chief of administration intern, Raleigh County Fire District. All three, please. Sign. Yeah, I did catch something here on Thomas Bryan. It says, um, you'll see it's. Oh. No, it was the next one. I think. Scott Cassidy. Scott. I changed yeah, it on okay. there. You'll see I changed it on the green yeah. sheet. The date of fire is not the same not as the, the date same. of <laughs> separation. Yeah, okay. It says <laughs> this kind of conflict here. I took it back to Michelle. So she looked up the date and I, you'll see where I pinned it in and initialed it on the form. Okay. I looked at that one. Like, I saw I that too. I was like, <laughs> it didn't last so long. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't need a form for that. <laughs> there we go. Any commissioners need a motion to approve payroll and accounts payable? I would make a motion to approve accounts payable and payroll. Second. We moved and second to approve payroll and accounts payable. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All three sign. Commissioners have any changes to the minutes of March 15th? Rich, I do have one change. It's going to need to be, I'll send the language over to the CD. On the 15th? On the 15th. Okay. The third good. executive session it just needs to be tweaked a little yep. bit. Please do. Sure. Okay. So we need to approve those as amended commissioners. All right. All right. We need separate one for each one? Or? Yeah. Okay. I'll move to approve the amended minutes for the March 15th meeting. I would second that. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes from the March 15th special meeting as amended. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Then the minutes from March 18th, commissioners. I would make a motion to accept the minutes as presented for March 18th. Second. We moved and seconded to approve the minutes as written from the March 18th meeting of the Rhino County Commission. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Senate agenda look okay, commissioners? Yes. Any items for next week's press conference? Do not. Who says Governor King works? <laughs> You did. <laughs> I don't know if I can get that right. Paper clip came off of one of those. I don't know where it was. No, probably just going to get it figured out.
The next commissioner, we have Catherine Hensler up uh, now. Right, yeah, yep. There you go. Good morning, Catherine. How are you doing? Hey, I'm a lot better than I was last week. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to hear. Glad to hear. Thank you. You're welcome. These are just copies of our most recent newsletter. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sorry, I think you get digitally, right? Uh, it doesn't matter. If you don't, forget it. Did you want to ask? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Catherine Hensler, um, Director of the Rattle County Historical Museum. Down there quite a ways, Catherine. Yeah. Almost there, it's 42, page 42. All right. Well, good morning. Um, <clears throat> we'll start with our regular visitation uh, and tours for the month of February. So we had a little lower attendance last month than we did uh, in January, but not by much. Museum attendance, good no health attendance were higher. Um, however, our other uh, programs and uh, museums were tap lower. So we rounded out with an attendance of 371 collectively. Volunteer hours are right about the same as the previous month. We had 134 full hours, and that was um, comprised of 53 general volunteer hours, 74.5 from our Raleigh County Historical Society Board of Directors, and then six and a half through community service workers. Education and outreach. We did have our regular fireside chat on February 13th. There were 22 who attended, and the topic was love and marriage on the prairie. And we did that um, just as a little ode to Valentine's Day, which was the following day. That exhibit, or excuse me, that program has been converted into an exhibit. And on Tuesday, it was installed in the county courthouse. So it's on the second floor. And that is um, open to the public to come and view. Um, they do have to get through security, which probably slows some people down, but um, that is available and installed for, for viewing, and that'll probably be up until about June or so. Um, <clears throat> Curator Highsmith and I provided two off-site educational presentations in February. One was to the Lions Club with 31 attendees, and the topic was to read the Lake and Electric Park, and the other was with the Welcome Club, Club of Manhattan with 52 attendees, and that was on Kimball Castle. We also provided some specialized tours of the museum at Good Know House in February. One was for the ESL group of Manhattan Area Technical College, and then um, a couple individual tours for students of Dr. Nost and Dr. Riviera's Spanish classes at K-State. And the reason they've been coming to visit is they're helping us with that Spanish translation um, of the Good Know House. Um, tour. So we're hoping that that will be turned into an audio tour to where there will be certain stations where visitors can just scan a QR code and um, get both the audio and the transcribed tour in Spanish uh, at the Good, Good Know House. This is a pilot project um, and we've been very lucky that um, these two classes are doing this for free for us. So there is no cost. Um, like I said, pilot project, we're doing the good note house because that work is never, I shouldn't say never, it's not going to change. Whereas the museum, when we have exhibits that switch out, we would have to change those transcripts pretty regularly. So we're starting with something that we know is going to be permanent. Um, and then if that is a success, we'll move over to the Wolf House and the museum and do this with some of our exhibits as well. So um, we're hoping that that will be uh, an attraction for Spanish speaking visitors who um, don't typically visit our site. And that's because we do not have the resources at this time. Um, we are also complete uh, with fourth grade field trip signups for students. And when I submitted this, uh, report we had 487 signups and that is now up to 528. So that is a record. 
Um, we are very pleased with that. Every single uh, fourth grade in USD 383 has signed up, as well as the Manhattan Christian School and Manhattan Capital School. So um, those um, field trips will be taking place uh, the second, the second and third whole weeks of April. So we'll be very busy. Those will be down at the warehouse. We do still, we are still seeking sign up um, volunteers for the Joseph positions. Um, and again, while this was submitted um, a little while ago, we now have 52 of those 96 spots filled. So we're getting there. Uh, as far as collections, we had uh, 10 full donations of collections of donations um, in February. And of those 10 individual donations 63 items came in with those so that's 10 donors 63 items um we were able to process um three backlog collections and in those three backlog collections were a total of 83 items and we were not able to uh, process any museum acquisitions and we consider that um, something that's found in collections in the archives and library department we saw six um individual external research requests, one internal. We had one in-person appointment and one walk-in. So February was actually a very quiet month as far as new requests, but uh, Linda was very busy working on uh, follow-up requests for previous months. As far, <clears throat> excuse me, as building and grounds, we are still actively cleaning out the museum space. Um, we were able to get about 350 additional square feet cleaned out in the workroom and temporary storage. You know, that doesn't seem like much, but uh, with the magnitude of things that we've got sitting around when you be cleaned out, we're actually really Good. proud of that. So it has created some additional space. Um, we are looking into some more um, compact storage solutions, and um, we're very happy to have that space back. Uh, we are still running into some issues with the track lighting system in both the exhibit galleries and the temporary per and permanent storage areas. Uh, we have come up with a few alternative uh, lighting solutions, and those are mainly floor lamps, not LEDs. <clears throat> we have had three of the new as needed museum assistant positions start. Uh, both in January and February, and they're all doing fabulous. Each of these people serves as a docent. They work with guest services, and they have been assigned individual assignments to support our curators. So based upon their interests and their skills, some are working with collections, some are working with research, um, and then some are assisting with exhibits and programs. We are also hosting two uh, interns from K-State this <laughs> semester, and these are credit-based internships. They're not funded by the county or the historical society. Um, <clears throat> their names are Kat Reiki, who comes from the archaeology department, and Allison Youngers, who is coming from the history department. Both are doing great. They've been helping to fill in some of the needs with the museum assistants as they're training as well. They've been helping with tours, and they're both working on semester projects. One is going to be working on um, an exhibit, and the other is going to be working with our curative collections to help uh, rehome a lot of the items that are not suitable for our museums. And then just looking at upcoming events, I won't go through all of these. They're written here, um, but um, on March 25th, we do have a tour. That'll be the Historical Society's quarterly meeting. Um, it'll be a pre-renovation tour of the Wareham Opera House. Those, uh, there were tickets available. They have closed since then. So this event is closed to new registrants, but we have about 47 people signed up to attend. This will be one of the last tours, as I understand it, before the Wareham, House, the Wareham Opera House closes for its renovation. So it'll be about another two years or so before we're able to get back in there. We had to reschedule our March fireside chat due to illness at the museum. Um, and so March's date or March's topic has been just moved to April's date. So April 9th, we'll be uh, doing our fireside chat, like the copy title will be Ban The Banjo and Its Masters. And this is uh, gonna be provided by Derek Jody. Um, we've got our upcoming regular meetings with the trustees as well as the historical society. And then on April 23rd, we'll have another quarterly meeting. This will be titled The History of the First Congregational Church, held at the Congregational Church. And Leo Shell will be providing that presentation. That is free and open to the public. 
And as I mentioned at a meeting um, about two weeks ago, uh, we have now set the date for a cemetery restoration workshop. That will be on May 11th from 10 until 2, and it's a partnership with Curie County Historic Society. So we'll be working at St. Joseph's Historic Church and Cemetery, and that's right on the border of Riley and Curie County. So nice partnership for us, um, a good educational experience. We haven't opened up registration yet on that, but... Um, and then lastly, can you so, make sure I get that? Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, we actually haven't sent any marketing material out yet. We're waiting on some confirmation with the gal who's going to be providing the program, okay. just so we can set an appropriate cost. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And then lastly, uh, we do still have the exhibit at the Wolf House titled Forget Me Not Funerals in Victorian Era Riley County. That will be opened until May 26th. And the Wolf House is open on Saturdays and Sundays from 2 to 5 and is always free and open to the public. So that concludes my presentation. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. Well, thank you very much. And have a great afternoon. Cheers. Thanks, Kathy. Have a good weekend. Thank everyone you. getting well at the museum. Pardon? I said everyone getting well because I understood that through the yep. whole. We caught everything really quickly, and everybody who needed to <laughs> quarantine to stay home. So oh, they only left a couple of us. <laughs> but we're all back and running. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner. Do you have Clancy at 9 30? <laughs> This cooler in here today. Well, the heat's not working again, or what? Oh no, I didn't even look at the set when I came in. Why is it so? I kind of like here? it, but I'm, I'm I, sure you are cool. I'm cool. Doesn't doesn't the new thing work? That we're playing? Or do they shut them off early? Don't, I don't. I'm not sure if we shut them off yet. See, I don't. I haven't been told we did. Hmm. Well, it's cold. Cold. There's no steam getting to it. It's this door that lets in all the air over here. Door and windows. And windows. windows. My hair is blowing back here. I bet. Yeah, we need. I can see. <laughs> that would take a lot of wind. <laughs> Is that your beard or your? <laughs> Maybe the one I forgot to get. The one you forgot to get. Lacey, I have a restricted covenant that the city is running for. Drainage easement at the new EMS building. Okay. You can redo it to see it by building spots and make sure I have the right things filled in. Okay, you've already sent it your ask. Okay, so send me that. Yeah. Have you already sent it to me? I can give it to you. All right. Even better. You don't need that. This is my copy. Already meeting the bank account. Yeah, I need to have a chat with you post meeting. Oh, okay. That's no, 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 the major. No problem. Okay. 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 You can leave with what you brought. Taking everything went well on Tuesday under the circumstances. <laughs> the biggest problem was the stupid printer on the big scanner for the paper ballots. Paper jammed once, got that fixed. You know, it's quite a deal because the computer reads it. Yeah. And then a cord came loose and got that fixed, you know. And well, you was in no hurry. It was running in advance. You know, we said an hour I have to get it done before we release results. But it was a hiccup and got that fixed turn up going along, ran out of paper. Said good there's a hole in the end of the oh, no. crack printer. Yeah. Oh, you know, see so you know, yeah. okay. You've got to be kidding me. So our printer was the big issue. I was like, God, you've got to be kidding me. That's, well, that's why there weren't many to count. Yeah, there weren't. There weren't. 
Okay. Tell staff you never know what it is. Or there's always some little thing that yeah. pops up, you know, yeah. as long as it's little. Yeah. Or you waiting there. Oh, it was just extremely slow across the state all day during the day the list serve was going on, talking about how slow it was, you know. What, what's he, 1,700 in person? Is that mm -hmm. all it was yeah. that day? That's... Yep. Not many. I've already heard chatter that this was a horrible, bad idea. It's never horrible to have an opportunity to vote, take part in a civic process. I don't know, but this, but this, this was not necessary. Okay, Clancy. I'm done. I really don't have anything to give you. Yeah. All that mountain full of stuff you got spread out there. And That's why I don't have anything to give you. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's coming like later. One of the reasons. It's yeah. coming later, huh? Okay. I could have pieces of it. Well, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, at this point, it must be. No. Well, I was just going to ask any news on 162. The only news I have is they're working, our lobbyists are working to get it, quote, above the line. So that it's, there's a huge number of yeah. things that are in general orders. And it's way down the list, but it's not at the end. Okay. And there's a bunch of stuff. It's just my hope, and I'm probably jinxing it, even though I don't believe in jinxes. I really don't. But there's a bunch of stuff involving local government matters that if they decided they wanted to pull up, you know, kind of like yeah. having the Senate. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's the non-controversial things? Yeah. Since you've got the passage by the Senate, recommendation to pass it as amended by the committee, maybe it fits in there and maybe it gets pulled up, but they're working on it. Okay. They're doing whatever magic is done. This I'll keep you, I checked yesterday. And that's what the word I got back. Hopefully. Anybody, yeah. anybody else hate buying appliances? I just hate oh. Depends on what type of appliances. Washer. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> <good work. laughs> and expensive. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Yeah, the yeah. prices yeah. they are nowadays. And things go old. Wasn't that old. Don't get LG. They don't, they don't do service. Oh, LG. Really? Yeah. Mm -mm. They won't do services. Right. Yeah. Really? Really? Because that's Careful. what we bought. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I'm sure yours is the exception. <laughs> well, I mean, if you look on... I do know a repairman. I do know well, a repairman. We, we didn't use, we use walls. Okay. And that's, you know, that's, that's the backwards way I would do it now. I mean, it's going to help you now. But I've learned that... You want to know that you've got somebody who can service it. So I would ask, what should I, I would contact whoever you usually use and ask them, do you work on, what brands do you work on? What do you not work on? I've never done that before, but next time. Not yet, I'm and not. I'll have the opportunity because nothing ever lasts. I have a friend that got bought when he did his kitchen, bought all LG and package deal. And then this starts going out and that. It's only been like eight years and all these clients are starting going out. And so he's checking to get it serviced. These guys won't come out and work on shit. You know, they, they won't pay us. I remember well, you probably wouldn't hear Eddie's clients. <coughs> yeah. And their <coughs> the, the retired guy had a spot out by the airport that when they when people traded in their old ones, he took all the old ones in, yeah. rebuilt them and sold them out of the house out there. Mm -hmm. And we bought a washer there that was used and we bought it and it lasted like 10 or 12 years. The used one, a brand new one lasted six years. Yeah. Bought a deep freeze there. Oh. To my knowledge, we still got it. That was like <laughs> 88, 89. Yeah, so, but he that was eight long ago. That was still operating. I, was, yeah. I recognize that name. They had still downtown here. They had, well, where um, Civics Plus is, yeah. that building. <laughs> It was theirs, and then then Sears bought it and used it for their appliance. So okay. that's what it, that may have been a connection because I recognize that name. That's all the way back to the mid eighties. Yeah, that's right. Seventies. Yeah, too. you know, that's not ended. All Bosch has been about is the best lottery. But no, I think it was there all the way up yeah, until. But they don't sell them um, in the U.S. Or box for seven oh, dollars. Yeah, uh, uh, and I found a lot of dishes. They have been the end of the end. It was like maybe used. I think so. Quiet. Oh yeah, I can't hear. I can't hear. The refrigerator makes more noise when it runs than the 
Then the, 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 the boxes, right? You know, I had two sets. Yeah, like Bruce has said. Even small like engine repairs. Balls. That's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, I, I kept sets. his. I got a mower. And he had a beautiful lawn. Well, that set must be. Anybody specialize in small engine mm -hmm. stuff that like, they take? It's so, fine. I don't know. It's got a few things. I tried to get a gym. Last gentleman I knew. Uh, also, a little place down here on Third Street, which is a new little strip little thing. Yeah, the last person I knew up here locally. Yeah, about two minutes. They came out and worked on it and replaced the drain pump. But it worked for a week, a couple weeks, and then it quit again. Mm -hmm. They checked the whole drain pump wasn't something, something wasn't, the wiring wasn't right, but then it still wouldn't work. They said, Oh, it's got to be in the computer, and the computer chipped us two or three hundred dollars. Well, yes. and I realized that's what we paid for that machine, but that's not what you pay for them now. Because mm -hmm. we found the receipt from when we bought the when you bought it, yeah, with that one because <laughs> they were wanting some information when they worked on it. And I found. I keep all that list. Yeah. The book that comes with it, I just read the day on it. <laughs> but, wow. Yeah, it it's lasts. crazy. Appliances is just. It is like our, I mean, when we bought that other one, we had kids that, mm -hmm. that used it. Every day we probably. use it all the time. Now, for two people. Yeah, it's crazy. It shouldn't. It's not. It should last a long than that. Well, I hope you have good luck with it. But Some of them are okay. Consumer Reports talks about those that we recommend LG. On all of their stuff. Because mm -hmm. I went by that. I don't know what else, you know, because you go and look at it and they all. That's crazy. They've all got too many. You had no wife. It's too much stuff. You got steam and you got this and you got that. It's just like That's so what wife said because her dad had uh, not the agitator, but the impeller. It's mm -hmm. a new type. But he had one of those, but I had trouble learning how to run it. And we went and looked at it because that company looked at it and said, because they had both of the ones. We looked at one each. And I said, you don't know how to run either one of those. I mean, there's, you know, there used to be a dial here. And a dial here. There, hot and cold. Hot, hot <laughs> cold. Uh, you know, gentler. Or, gentler. And yeah. how big of a load. Yeah. And you push the button. Well, now there's, you know, a whole control panel. Oh, yeah. It's great. And, you know, I don't use all that stuff. I don't know why people use Well, because I yeah, know ours, who said it, it's set for this load, this size of load, this wash, you know, and that's 90% right every once in a while you switch it or something. But, yeah. Well, the Bosch adjusts. You don't have to set the size of the load. It adjusts the water according oh, to, it's, to, it's, to what's in there. Yeah, to what's in there. Mine will quit, won't spin sometimes, so I have to go in and set no. it. It has a spin. So, really nice. Well, I keep thinking I'm gonna we I want to get a new set because I want to my long term small I want to get a stack of oh. you know, it'll save me some room on the other side, but I'm scared to get it on this. <laughs> well, well they said they said oh, they're, they're, they last five to seven years. That's all they made last now. Yeah, that's Three. crazy. It's kind of like college or something, maybe. Well, that's what that last car we bought, the Jan's car. There's so much on it. I thought, oh man, it won't buy because there's electronic this, electronic, mm -hmm. but it's it's been a great car. Yeah. So I think put too much stuff on it. If the computer goes out, yeah, you know, you're in trouble. Then they have to go in and really that's what they said on this one. Computer thing is was bad. And you could buy the chip for two or three hundred dollars, and that might fix it. It might, might not. not. Yeah. And, and then you still got an old machine. So. Who knows? <laughs> well, <and> ours, <clears throat> where it says, because ours is in the first room too, you have to take the door off and just to get it, to get the things in, and you have to take the stop off of the door because hmm. he didn't put a big enough door in whoever's built. It's stuck on the back of the house. Obviously, he wasn't there when it was built. Yeah, but, somebody but, just stuck it. But it <laughs> You know, that part, have to pull have to pull the dryer out first because there's no room in it. They pull the dryer out first, and then <laughs> which they're going to deliver it, set it up, but they won't do all that. I've got to do all that and get it ready for them when they come in. Hmm. So, did you get both washer and dryer? They don't take you that, but the ones with your dryers will be the dryers fine. Yeah, there's not a lot that goes wrong with the dryer. 
And they seem to last full, like say, because there's not much to it. Oh. It's a heating thing and it's not cold. No, just and blower and that's it. Okay. Non competitive new bid. <laughs> I just hate all kinds of appliances. Oh, I just do. Okay. I do. 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 I we just roll for everybody. It makes, it makes it an island, so it makes right in the middle of the room, so it makes too much noise for me. I'll, I'll wake up in the middle of the night, I'll turn around and say, What is that? That's what we were when the guy came out the first time. Look, I was sure he kept saying, Well, do you guys have a sump pump? I kept hearing something turn off when I was trying to work on it. I kept hearing something kick off. You know, yeah, we don't. Yeah, we're trying to work on it. And then we found, figured we had the dishwasher running, which was next door, and you could, and I think that was it. It's just, you, just, could you could hear a muffled sound, you know, it's just a, mm -hmm. you know, humming for it. Oh, mm -hmm. were humming. We figured out like, that's what you could hear because the dishwasher was running. So, mm -hmm. um, they heard, so you got a pump, I keep hearing something on it. But, you know, well, I have one of those on demand water heaters. Yeah, I've got one of those too. You know, it yes, takes, I measured one time how long it takes for the water to heat up from just from the where it is to the kitchen. A gallon and a half of water gets wasted every time you want to get hot water. It's like crazy. That's, the guy, that's not he energy. Said, he said, but before you were paying to keep all that water hot all day, whether you use it or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what we got continuous. And then, like I say, the instant one, though, it's nice for showers. Yeah, you it is. Run out of hot water. You never run out. And that's know? why I did it when we built our house, having a family of six. I knew who would be getting the cold shower. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. The three girls. That, that's not going to no. be a long shower. Four. <laughs> Especially when they're uh, teenagers. Or so. Yeah, the, um, yeah. But then, you know, the, I'd rather have just a kind of water heater. About 50 gallon time. I mean, I like ours. Well, mine makes a lot of noise, and it's just like in the bathroom. It'll turn on, and then it'll turn off, and then turn on, and turn on. I can hear it on and off, you know, going back. So talking water. appliances, huh? Yeah. Well, now we're in the plumbing. Oh. Mine's all the way down in the basement, so there's no hearing it. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I talk to each other. Mars, that was one of the benefits of getting us little uh, yeah, van ones that didn't take up so much space because ours, mm -hmm. somebody, you know, I don't know, 100 year old house, and some, somebody put a little room on the back, had a half bath, the water heater, the furnace, washer and dryer, yep. <laughs> everything crammed in there. And that's <clears throat> so you get the water heater out of that, and then. The stuff I just finished built, and I built another half bath in the back of one of the rooms. So, putting that out of there and actually room to get around in there, she to get. And they have, you know, a lot of those front loading washers now, but you can't do that. There's not room to open the front, mm -hmm. you know, no room to stand there. So, but I don't know. I just. You know, this the whole appliance thing just irritates me every time we have to buy it. Oh, yeah. Or necessary evil. To last make time, some of your money. Last time we, our, we bought it, last time we, get, we bought a get a gas stove. And we look around and happened and that's when Sears had their mm -hmm. they had that old place out there. Uh -huh. And they had one that was being discontinued or something. I actually, I felt like I got a good deal. Uh -huh. First time I, in a long time, I felt like that's good. I got it, and it has, and it's been great. It works mm -hmm. great. You know, so. so we had electric force. We had to run the gas in there. Had to pay the down the gas in. Right. So much nicer working. Heat on. 
gas stoves and electric. And we have electric. When ours goes out, we will go back in with gas. My wife does prefer to cook with gas. See, the washer is so expensive, and I just looked for it. I paid for it. I said, Oh, well, it'll be double now this time. And I was right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh. And we didn't buy the expensive ones. There's some of those. Well, they're outrageous. Right, $1,500 for them. No, they're outrageous. Well, yeah, that's the base price, just... plus delivery, plus haul off the old one, plus sales tax, which they want to add more to. Yeah, a lot more to. Here they're talking on in focus. Hey. Talking to them in the not too distant future. And uh, we're talking about their Marvel funds, so they've got some left. We got two point seven. Yeah, days. but it's the first part. Well, we did this. Remember, we had that using pay raises, and now they're saying, "Oh, we're running short." Well, it's used all that to artificially keep your their L let be low a couple of years. Yeah. They're yeah, estimating they're, they're going to be behind the next three years, a little over six million dollars. Yeah. The only reason they're not right now is kind of federal money. Yeah, well, that's what he said. That's what they used the ARPA money to, for the raises, but that was a temporary benefit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember we had that discussion. Mm -hmm. well, never use one time money for that kind of stuff. Yeah, to me, because you just pay double in the future. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to come. Yeah. It's a shell game. Well, that's. I'm it, not so for sure if it catches put, you every time. I'm not so for sure if they put a sales tax on the ballot for general fund purposes. That's going to go over well. I mean, the, the wreck and all that, they'll get that repassed. I, I, don't, I don't see. Well, I don't, I don't know. They're going to build a new indoor and an outdoor pool and close all the existing ones. People are heard. Well, they're talking about going with water parks because they're cheaper. Yeah. Not doing pools, doing oh, the splash park, the splash yeah. parks because they're cheaper to maintain and easier. Yeah, but that I live over in the Northview area, it's not going over very well over there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, North, yeah, and that's the oldest yeah. pool that we have. That's what they, they just spent how many millions that many too many years ago mm -hmm. to redo everything. That's what the new parks director recommended going with the splash parks because they're cheaper to maintain. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did he just build one to burn city? No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they were saying that per capita we've got more we pools. pools. We got too many pool space. And Lawrence only had one major it? pool for and twice the population than we have. Why did they spend all that money on the seven that was that many years ago? No, it was uh 2012, 2014, and that time frame. It's only been a decade. Yeah, I built the Seco pool. I never have an entire park apartment radio. Oh, wait a minute, that's not that old. I did that job. <laughs> it, was, it was the kitty pool. So it's one business I would not want to be in now. What? Having a parks department like that to maintain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, parks are here. Yeah, they are. They ought to be just a outlaw. What have they done that way? Coolbird Hills, you know, around that roundabout, are they putting in a park down there, or what are they doing? I'm trying to figure that out too. They got the, cleared all that. They got an approach there, like they're going to build a road. Yeah, and they cleared out all the trees. Yeah, and I don't know if they're going to build something. I don't there. know how you're going to build something back there. You yeah, probably build it all the way up. Yeah, yeah. But they and put an approach in yeah. on the yeah. south side, like there's another road coming in there, and I. The old one had an approach. The old one did too. Did it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. it came in, but nobody used it. I don't think. 
But they did a good job with the roundabout over there. I, I give yeah. credit on it. Yeah, I actually did do some recently. Yeah. Yesterday, couple, you know, the outer landscape and all that back yeah. in there and stuff. It looks really nice. Could have used another lane. I think I've got a setup to where they can do that at some point in time, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they better that out well. Yeah, they better have. I'm surprised they didn't do two to begin with. They don't see. I don't think it's because they see the density going into the um, golf course just yet. When they have major tournaments and stuff on there, mm -hmm. I think that's when you'll see that happen. But they've got it set up where they can do it, which I think is smart. I, I was they by there with yesterday or day before, and I'm like, "What are they doing down there?" Yeah, they've been <laughs> working on it steadily since they opened it up in August or whatever. So. Okay, well, we're at 9.50, so speaking of parks, yeah, we got we have a big stack of bids here for a mower. These mowers aren't that important, I guess. Non-competitive, competitive bid. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, we'll uh, start with the uh, one of the bid, I guess, that we've got here, and that's from Professional Turf Products out of... I almost said clueless to Texas. Clueless <laughs> <laughs> Texas. Uh, let's drop the C and the L on that. Uh, that would have been bad. Euless. Euless Texas. E U L E S S. I think it's in that program. Euless. Something. No, the name of the town is not important. The numbers are. Oh, so let's let's go with that. Um, I think I'm looking at a couple of things here. Uh, the total bid I'm seeing here on the front is $70,458.19. Right. Yeah. There are all kinds of specifications and options on it, so... I may have to come out and jump on that when you get it, Dave. Take out to see how it's on the sled hill. Okay, yeah. yeah. I like that idea. Does actually. it drive itself at that price? <laughs> Does it drive itself at that price? No, it's not, not a robotic mower. You gotta have a button push. I like Buzz over there on the other roundabout. I've seen it drive. Who yeah. <laughs> thought we'd have seen the day when you're paying $70,000 for the mower? Yeah. We're there. It must be a big one. Well, I mean, it's got a whole page of specifications and options and zero turn from caveats like this. Weather cab, windshield kit, mulching kit. I should have brought the specifications with dual wheel kit, horsepower plus gas. I don't know what all that means. Back in my day, you just pulled the cord and it went. <laughs> it went as far as you let it get. You were able to push it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you ran out of gas. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. This <clears throat> bid from Professional Turf Products. Total price seventy thousand four hundred fifty eight dollars and nineteen cents. You say that oh, broom options. Eighty-four inch. He's got more out than my shark is. That rise is better. For sure. More than most cars. They just mean more to go wrong. See, that's the suspension seat. Recliner. Recliner. It's that air conditioning or something that we're throwing in July. Well, we don't have to send this back to staff for one bit, or yeah, technically, we do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Make, yeah. Sure we Make sure they meet specs, yeah. Okay. okay, I guess I'll make a motion to send um, the uh bid from professional turf products back to staff for their recommendation for review and recommendation. A second, 
It's been moved and seconded. And it's to staff for further review and recommendation. All in favor? Aye. 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 No bump in one, sir. A bit. A lot to have one, sir. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Commissioner, next you have Gary Pike at 10. And so I'm just. So um, after the uh, chamber meeting on Tuesday, um, the NCA set up the little fan experience thing out in front of the courthouse. Yeah, and the athletic department took some video and pictures and stuff. All of us and hmm. snapped the photo and got the courthouse and all the flags and stuff in it. Commissioner, we have intergovernmental luncheon coming up uh, March twenty fifth. Correct. Okay. This Monday. Yep. All of you like to attend? Maybe. I still, I won't know till this afternoon. I think it's But we already confirmed that. Okay. Oh, did you? Okay. okay. I got a. Okay. But yeah, I do, just in case. Okay. Yeah, I probably will, but I'm not for sure until later this afternoon. Okay. I'll let Cindy know. Okay. And to do the parking, you have to go to the um, website, not the app. Yeah, that's a code. Or you can pay cash. I just go and park. Yeah. Morning, Gary. Good morning. Yeah, worst case scenario, it's like two bucks. And yeah. It's going to break the bank. Good morning, Gary. Good morning. Clients, you want to go to intergovernmental luncheon on March 25th? Don't think so. No? Yeah. So they have who's speaking. Brian Pete, fake Patty's Day, and then K State 2023 economic impact analysis. Is that a new presentation? I wonder because they've done that presentation. But it's that's like, not the 105. This is like the that's not the one. Okay. Yeah. And that's kind of like that. We put it in perspective. It's kind of like a state's version of what Fort Riley does. Like all the oh, okay. downs, the numbers. Of, we got to, where did we get that? We did get that from somewhere, and I don't remember either. Mm -hmm. There might have been a role. Was that the role? I it was. Right. That's I right. That that's right. What the yeah. impact was. But they did give the 105 presentation. Yeah, yeah that's right. Gary, does your wife actually believe you when you say you got to go on a grueling work trip? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she believes everything that I tell her. <laughs> That's not a little program there. <laughs> <laughs> Without question. This is just the kind of venue where we see that kind of courage. <laughs> and the other party's not dressed. That's exactly right. <laughs> And, and you've got to remember, it is being taped. It's yeah. being live. And she so. knows that I would say that without her here. Now, if she was here, I would say it, and she would just laugh, and then you would all <laughs> the gig would be up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so I'm the boss of my house. My wife said I could say that. <laughs> <laughs> said I'm not the boss at work or at home. So. <laughs> So hard to find that appropriate domain, huh? <laughs> yes, when I'm all by myself. Ready to go into the game tomorrow afternoon. Got a deal tomorrow night that I would have to leave the game early to go to. I'm kind of working out the rest of the parameters. We bought tickets and I just got hit by knowing 
when you know whether it's which because we had stuff Thursday, Friday, and Saturday that well. Depending on when they are, which one of us gets to go. If they win, they get to play Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. It should have been the first game. He's linked Play the game for a reason. So I call it March Madness. Yeah. Right. And it's a little too soon for the man, but. So trying to figure out do we have a good baseball team this year or not? I heard one of the pitchers was hurt. Yeah, one of the better ones. So, uh, he used to go to a game or two, but have a good one. He got down pretty big the other night against Wichita State and came all the way back and won. So oh, yeah. did they? Yeah. yeah, they seem to do that a lot. They come back at the end yeah. of the game, you know, it yeah. takes them all to get cranking. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, well we're at ten o'clock, Gary. So all right, tell us. Tell us about Brazil. Tell us about Brazil. Yeah. yeah. All right. What I did this winter was I went to a place that was a lot warmer <laughs> than it is here. And I don't know. Minimize it up a little bit smaller. Yeah. yeah. And move this over here, maybe. There we go. All right, so just a little bit of a background, a trip. Carl is the Kansas Ag and World Leadership Program, which started in the 1980s, uh, late 1980s, and it was built rural leaders, basically. And and so I knew about the program way back when, and when my um, immediate supervisor, Carla Nemechek, called me up one day this last fall to see if I would be interested in going to Brazil, I said, sure, so here we go. Um this run is actually was a dry run for the next class. So the people that were on the tour were all my age, closer to my age than usually a little bit younger, more middle age, because people don't live to be 130 typically. So it would be people that are normally 35 to 45 that are on this trip. This was a dry run for the group that will be going next year. This year's group is actually going to Spain in May, I think. And so this is a dry run for 2025, the participants there. We toured a wide variety of things. This particular one, Tozan Farms, was the first stop that we made. It uh, was a coffee bean, and I think they had some oranges there too, but we just looked at the coffee plantation. Started in 1798. And... The interesting story about this place was it was bought by the uh, Iwasaki family who owns Mitsubishi Motors in 1927, and they've owned it ever since then. That tree in the background has been there since the start of the farm, which was interesting that the lady that was giving us the tour was um, not associated with the family. She was a contractor that gave the story. This is the mansion that the owner lived in and he just passed away. Japanese gentleman uh, passed away about two weeks before we got there. So I don't know if there's anybody living in the house right there, but there's, it doesn't show up good in this picture. But there's big asphalt floor right in front of the house and this side of the hedge. And that was the drying floor for the coffee beans. So they, when they pick the coffee beans and bring them, they spread them out on the asphalt to dry them out before they're shipped to a roaster where they're ground and roasted. A lot of them actually go to Europe mm -hmm. and get roasted there and ground. And uh, Arabica beans are the main ones. The type of beans, there's several varieties within that type. Uh, and we went to see a couple other coffee plantations as well, and I'll share a little story about that. That's the coffee bean plant there when they're green. They kind of turn red over time, so they weren't harvesting yet. Um, but they basically have, in a lot of the areas we were at, the further north areas, basically have 365 frost-free days. So they, they grow stuff year-round, and uh, it's, it, it was 85 to 90 degrees every day we were there. So it was really hard to put up with, but we managed to get through it somehow. Uh, yeah, so that's a close-up of the coffee bean plant. Um, it's, it's a very interesting in industry, and I'll show you some of the machinery in a little bit. At the same coffee bean plantation, there was a pasture down below, and one of our tour guides said, you see all those little humps out there? Yeah, they're termite mounds. That is, a, And they're hard as a rock. And the, the way that happens or occurs, occurs is that 
pastures get overgrazed, and when they get overgrazed and get snubbed down to the ground, the termites come in and build these mounds. So he said we could reclaim a lot of lost grazing uh, area if we would clear these mounds out and graze the animals in a more sustainable way. So, but we saw them all over. So it, it was a widespread uh, problem. The, the next place we visited was called Terra Viva Farms. Actually, you'll see a lot of Europeans that came to uh, Brazil and started farming. And this gentleman here, his father started in 1959, a floriculture business, but they also grew orange and coffee, everything else. Uh, potato, potatoes, all kinds of bulbs. Uh, they grow corn and soybeans. It's a, it's a pretty big company. And uh, at that farm, they have their greenhouses. And so all these different flowers, a lot of orchids, a lot of what I call amaryllis, but somebody told me that wasn't right. But huge greenhouses with lots of flowers. They all stay within the country, though. They don't, because of shelf life of flowers, they don't last very long. They stay within Brazil or South America. This particular place was really interesting. The guy in the middle was the owner and the, and the guy who ran the farm. Uh, it was Nova Sintra, dates back to 1901. They had over 1,900 acres on the farm and 500 were in coffee. Uh, he's very well spoken, although I don't understand Portuguese. He, he was very, uh, uh, seemed like very uh, sophisticated and, and, uh, and spoke well of the industry and the transfer did a great job. We had a coffee tasting deal at this farm. He had a little shop. I bought a package of the coffee and, and brought it back in my uh, luggage. And it was probably the best coffee I've ever drank in my life, honestly. It was really good. So do you have some of it made? I could use it today. <laughs> I, I tell you what, I, I'm going online to try to find some more. So <laughs> yeah. um, the coffee bean harvester, this is kind of a close-up. If you look at those uh, brushes, those vertical brushes, this thing goes over. The, the coffee bean plants are five to six feet tall, and these channels go over the top of the coffee beans, and those things rotate, knock the beans off into the tray on either side there, and then they get augered up into a big overhead bin, and then they bring them back to the asphalt drying floor, the concrete drying floor where they go. It's really pretty cool. Orange Grove, we saw oranges everywhere. Brazil is the number one grower in the world of soybeans, coffee beans, and oranges. And so we did see a lot of orange groves. Uh, that's what they look like up close. The thing that I found interesting about that is that they pick oranges whenever they're ripe, or it's just an ever bearing kind of a thing. So they'll pick some and then some more will grow and they'll pick those. And uh, of course it's very labor intensive, but that is an orange grove. The country is beautiful. It really is. And, and that's just overlooking one of the orange grove areas there. Uh, they're all planted very neat rows. They gel in between some and some they have grass strips on. Sao Paulo University is their big ag school. And, and as a matter of fact, three, uh, three or four of our um, tour guides that were Brazilian, spoke fluent Portuguese and fluent English, so they took us there, and the guy on the right was a former student there, and he's finishing a, a PhD here at K-State and just got hired by North Dakota State for a job up there. They have an, All these tour guides actually came from uh, large farms in Brazil, and one of them will be on our week tour, which is scheduled for May 16th out of the SAVE farm, Romulo Lolato, and he is our extension uh, wheat uh, specialist. And uh, so there, K-State's had a very good working relationship with that university down there. That's their administration building. Of course, palm trees and grass, the green green stuff was going on. That was really, really cool to see that. Um, this one was super interesting, soybean, corn, and rice farm. These folks had over 5,000 acres. Formerly, it was covered with trees. In the late 1980s, the Brazilian government decided to open that ground up to farming, so they gave it to the farmers and they cleared the lumber <coughs> and they just gave about 20% of the proceeds of the lumber back to the government and then they tilled the ground and, and farmed it, it became very successful. 100% um, no-till, their soybeans over 72 bushel an acre, 60 to 80 inches of rainfall a year. As soon as the soybeans were coming off, we go back in and plant corn. So, you know, 
you know, many worries about frost in a lot of those areas. All their equipment was very similar to what you'd see here in the United States. John Deere Case International kind of um, dominated the scene. What was interesting to me was the fence, fences around every farmstead. Chain link fences, eight to 10 foot tall with razor wire or barbed wire on top of that. So I asked the question, why was that? Well, they didn't explain that to the whole group, found out later, and they had Rottweiler dogs on chains in the yard. This family had been robbed not once, but twice. She can't own a gun to Brazil. Private citizens cannot own guns. So these people came in, tied them up, and they stole all of their Roundup, because everything's Roundup ready crops down there. Sold all their Roundup, sold it on the black market. That yeah, not once, not twice. Now, the criminals had guns, of course. But <laughs> Wait a minute. How could that, that I don't know. I that's thought they were allowed to own them. It's so weird. Don't they know that's illegal? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so the world. they can't defend that's themselves. The and uh, mm -hmm. so they just tie them up, and, and then eventually somebody comes in and ties them, I guess. But uh, they were very, very good, very good host, hosts for us. Uh, they had a lot of equipment, a lot of semis, a lot of big equipment, like big farms here in the United States do. And, uh, and they like to share their story. This was one of the planters on one of the larger farms we saw. Um, Again, they farm almost year round, go right back in after they have harvested no-till, no-till planters go right in through all the residue and plant. Their soils are very deep. They're very well drained. It had rained about an inch one morning when they were out harvesting beans that afternoon. Uh, water doesn't sit in their fields but they are very acidic, so they need to add a lot of lime to keep the pH balance in the soils. And there's a very high iron content, reddish colored soil, like you'd see a lot of in Oklahoma. Soybean harvest, um, because of all the rain they get that I mentioned earlier, they do have to spray the soybeans with fungicides up to six times per year during the growing season. So there's a lot more inputs to it. But the cost of their inputs are also lower than they are in the U.S. <clears throat> I don't know why that is. I don't know the economics behind that, but that's the case. And the tire industry must have a cartel or something in Brazil because there's no hardly any internal rail service. So all the grains are trucked off and, and go to terminals. They, they don't go to a terminal and unload them and get on a train and go on. They, they just go all the semis. And, there were semis all up and down this highway all day long while we were out there watching watching them. They had two 45-foot John Deere combines and one 40-foot John Deere combine going about four and a half mile an hour, and they were they were moving along. Brazilian beef uh, was my big disappointment. They were a big grower of beef cattle. Uh, this was one of their Brazilian barbecues at a buffet that we had. They come and slice it off the skewer. Uh, it was. I will say it had some flavor, but it was very tough. Um, I think if they cooked it for maybe uh, twice as long as they're cooking it, that might help. But I found myself chewing a hole in it, just trying to get it down. Now, there is a an exception to that, and I'll show you that later. We went to a feedlot, um, 5,000 head feedlot. They were calves were brought in from the north. The main breed of cattle in Brazil is Nelore. They're a boss indicus cattle, so they look like Brahmin cattle. They have a big hump. This feed yard fed all intact bulls. They don't castrate them, feed them. They just feed bulls. The working facility uh, had a snake or a working alley that was with all walls eight foot high that were solid concrete, so they couldn't jump out. Uh, they do have a very sophisticated health program. Their diet is mostly a grass silage, and, along with uh, distillate grains and a little bit of corn. So they're not corn fed like we would do here in the U.S. Niche of those bulls out in the pens. They were flat. Uh, they were kind of muddy. They had concrete bunks like we would in the U.S., but there was no concrete apron. Usually in the United States, our feedlots got a 12 foot concrete apron behind the feed bunk so that um, there's better footing, but they did not have that there. And I don't know why. That's the working facility I was talking about. That's the chute. Uh, the snake is kind of right behind this guy here. You can see that concrete wall. There's three steps up there to look down into it. That's why it's about eight foot, eight foot high. 
And that's the ration of grass silage in this kind of what it looked like in the bunk. This was their mule barn. They actually rode the pens with mules. Uh, the cowboy who got them all lined up for us, he just took a sorting stick, crowded them over into one corner, held that stick, and those mules just stood all up there and rode like that. So it was pretty cool. And we saw them out riding the pins when we were there on a couple of them. This was part of the um, touristy part. We did get to see, I can't even pronounce it, Nagusu Falls. They were in one of the Harrison Ford uh, movies. But there's like 243 waterfalls or something like that. The, other, the back side of the falls is Argentina. This side was Brazil. But it was beautiful. This was the exception to the rule on the cattle. These were black and red Angus cattle at one of the farms we visited. They grew soybeans and cattle. He had a bull sale, sold about 50 bulls per year. And they grilled ribeye steaks and then cut them up into chunks right there. And those were very good. So they do have some good beef over there. And this was this this was that place. Um, they're grass-fed cattle, uh, but they do sell bulls and they have a cow calf herd. And the hills that it was rolling there, the, the hills, it would remind you of Iowa. That was beautiful with all the green soybeans out there. So the uh nutshell of the whole thing, uh, I mentioned earlier, biggest raises of coffee, orange, and and uh, soybeans. They are very big on sustainability. Every farm we visit is we do everything sustainably. The no-till thing, uh, you know, your, your definition of sustainability is different everywhere you go. But this slide read that only 9.2% of the land in Brazil is used for corn, cotton, dry beans, or soybeans. And most of the research there is not carried out by the ag universities. It's carried out by individual uh, companies and the farmers pay for that research, uh, get a share in the information they get. That was just one evening there. I don't know how that picture got in, but it stuck that one. And we did have a Brazilian barbecue where they roasted lamb and beef and stuff over a, over a fire about the last night that we were there. And uh, these were a couple. The guy in the middle, was, his name is Carlos, and he's the one that's going to North Dakota State. Mm -hmm. And the other gentleman was from down around Wichita. But that was, it was a fantastic trip. It was, uh, I learned a lot. I plan to give this presentation several different places with even more pictures that I've got. But due to limitations on time, I didn't want to monopolize any of Elizabeth's time. So if she's next, but apparently she's not. So, any questions? Just, I promise you, I'd share that with you. But, we wanted to do that, and if you have a group uh, that you know that would like to see that, I will make it even longer and stuff, and I will some more pictures. So okay, okay, perfect. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. It was interesting. <laughs> it is time for Mr. Gary. Yeah. Good morning. Hello. Uh, Josh Gary, assistant director of EMS Annuals. I'm here for a request to fill uh, an open position, open full-time paramedic position at uh, EMS Ambulance Department. Uh, this is a budgeted full-time paramedic position, which was recently vacated. Uh, the, the position provides uh, direct patient care as part of a rotating Berkeley schedule. Um, it is responsible uh, as well for working uh, event standbys during the standby season. Um, this is a budgeted position, no adverse effects to our budget by filling it. Uh, failure to fill the position, however, will result in increased overtime costs as this position must be staffed when it's time to shift. Um, the EMS staff recommendation is to fill this position uh, with full-time paramedic at this time. Happy to answer any questions. I don't have any pictures of Brazilian cows. <laughs> You can bring back pictures of the NCAA tournament next time. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a, a crew up there at practice day. Yeah. Day. We go peek in and see what that looks like. Uh, That's uh, yeah. Strictly professional. Yeah. 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 Supervisory yeah. reasons. Yeah. 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 Well, filling the open paramedic position with EMS. I would second that. 
been moved and seconded to uh, fill the whole position of paramedic in the uh, EMS department. All in favor? All three right. sign, please. Next commissioner, you have Bob Isaac at 10 30. I didn't know everybody. Thank you. Sir, you know, it's good. I have all kinds of rules. You're trying to every. No, I am sure. Yep, I got you. I said they brought in last week, earlier this week, Colts radar lasers. And they're good. Lots of all lots of opportunities to volunteer to help. Oh, yeah, right. you know, with it all back. Yeah, sure they want lots of free help. Daughter in law, because they started calling about couple of weeks ago saying you're going to need to have this and this you're going to have to have this. Things about how the press conference goes, who has to be. Oh, you know, uh, I'm sure. Said it's been amazing. Pretty and regimented. Yeah, there's has got rules on everything they do. She's going to have how you doing? Well, how are you? All right. Yeah. How's the day? Great. How are you? It's Thursday. That helps. So happy to see Perfect still together here. I saw that You know, we did that farm thing on Saturday and it was like 46, but it's in Nebraska, so the wind was going. So what time did they uh, play? I don't know. No, no. Potentially watch the first ever NCAA tournament victory. I just would like to try. Uh, I've been so strong with crowd that we. I mean, I know it's a volleyball school and everything. I know. I know. I mean, it's I know. Part time, though. At least they made it. I know, right? But I thought they made it a bunch. Yeah, I thought they had one that had made it. No, they never won. Them and uh, Northwestern have made it. Northwestern. They won the other the, uh, two years ago. That's right. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah, that's very good. I'm going to go to the baseball. It's all. Uh, was it Tuesday or Wednesday next week? I saw them. I saw them. You know, you, you get in there in the evenings and the sun. And I typically don't go into the baseball game so about mid April because they're usually pretty chilly. It was good. I thought it was going to actually be cold in the class, but the seats aren't that bad. Yeah. But you do have to walk a little bit. Uh, uh, it's kind of yeah, Coyton, yeah, Coyton's kind of turned just a little bit, so you yeah. don't get the direct north wind at you. But no, but you unfortunately you don't get any sun. No, you don't. Know. But it's it was fun. It was a lot of fun, and there was a lot of just excitement and spirit. You know, baseball teams get pretty involved. Yeah, the Friday night games back in the early 2010s, so this was pretty fun. So you get to go there like five bucks, you get like a burger and a dog and a. No, don't pull out for that now. No, I know. I know. <laughs> I think the one friends was six dollars. Yeah. Yeah. 
Let's see if we can get Jack with us. She's got a blank. Don't take much for me to get hot. I'm feeling warm. So, we got to be good. There's a blend of roast and it's out of spirit. Yeah. That's not that. Yeah, I'll work all day in the hot and be hot and be fine and just keep going, but I don't like to just sit and be hot. <laughs> Because if you think about it, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> it's like cool days, I always crack open the window in my office, and the ladies yeah. swear that it's the tactic to keep everyone out. <laughs> I never worked in Elizabeth. You know, it's a lot more than that, Rich. Last week, had a room last week, and I came in. Someone else that the window was open, nice breeze coming through. Uh -huh. Yeah, I like fresher. I'm scared to open up the windows of mine. Yeah, <laughs> they fall out. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Our windows are yeah. like 100 year old. Windows. I'll be calling John going, Hey, can you come and fix this window? Yeah, okay, we got a new supply with this. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do. Yeah, well, you know, I open mine, but there's some things in the cabinet yeah. yeah. are literally right. Somebody's yeah. delivering something yeah. in the alley, yeah. or the yeah. wind's blowing. That's why I laugh at them. I'm like, I got the Manhattan, Kansas view, they got the Manhattan, New York view. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, and then Barry, he loves to like, because when he comes over here, he'll come down that back alley, but he loves to like walk right up there and just see him doing that. There's the crowd out of here. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Hey, Bob. It's all yours. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Good morning, folks. Good morning. Uh, Danielle Maple has made an application with Raleigh County Planning and Development requesting to replat lots 288, 289, 290, and 291, addition number one to University Park, into one lot. On March 11th, the Raleigh County Planning Board heard the request. And doing so, I cautioned the planning board that it was their role and responsibility to make a finding that the, plat, uh, the final plat meets the minimum requirements of the subdivision regulations uh, found in the Riley County Land Development Regulations. The subject site is generally located approximately 540 feet north of, feet north of Highview Drive on the east side of Mountain Ridge Road in University Park. The subject property was originally planted as lots 288, 289, 290, and 291 of addition number one to University Park in December of 1963, and later zoned residential during the 1974 zoning conversion process. The applicant wishes to combine the aforementioned lots into a single lot in order to build an accessory structure. Uh, there is no, uh, there is not a request or a requirement to rezone the property at this time. Speaking of zoning, the property was zoned A1 single family residential, uh, petition number two during the zoning conversion uh, process of 1974. The name of the zoning district was changed in January 2022 to SF2 uh, SF single family residential with the adoption of the Raleigh County Land Development Regulations. There are no variances, conditional uses, or special uses associated with the property. Raleigh County Fire District will continue to serve the site. The nearest county fire station is the University Fire State or University Park Fire Station, located at 7412 Brunfug Drive. The subject site is located within five road miles of the fire station. Here's the uh, copy of the final plat illustrating the orientation and location of the new lots boundary. Although the lot lines will be vacated as a result of this action, there are Two existing utility easements located on the site that will not be vacated with this plat. Uh, the replat will also serve to locate the existing accessory structure on the same lot as the principal building, bringing it, bringing it into compliance with the current development regulations. Well, a few pics of the site. As uh, is standing on the east right of way line of the Mountain Ridge Road or Mountain Ridge Drive. This is the single family residential dwelling occupying current lot uh, 291 and the driveway that serves it. <clears throat> Such property has direct access to Mount Ridge Road, a uh, paved two lane local roads maintained yeah. by the county. Uh, turning to my left, looking at east, northeast at the front and side yard of the home, the site is served by central water and central sewer through University Park, which is county benefit district. Uh, moving uh, more northeast along the right of way line. This is a, a pick of the second right way to the site. And turning southeasterly, this is a pick of the existing accessory structure located on the existing lot 291. Looking across the existing top lot 290, uh, this pick shows the undeveloped existing lot 289. Finally, uh, looking across existing lot 289 at lot 288 and the northeast part of the property. On March 11th, uh, the Riley County Planning Board heard the request, as mentioned, 
and approved the final plat of Maple Heights addition, a replat of lots 288, 289, 290, and 291, of uh, addition number 1G University Park, into a single lot as it was determined that it met the minimum requirements of Roddy County Land Development Regulations and the Sanitary Code. Staff recommends that the Board of County Commissioners acknowledge the approved final plat of Maple Heights addition, a replat of lots 288, 289, 290, and 291 of addition number one to University Park, a single lot, as it again was determined that it meets the minimum requirements of the Roddy County Land Development Regulations Sanitary Code. That concludes my presentation. It's fairly straightforward. If you have any questions for me, I'd uh, have some. Yeah. Have anybody else? Okay. You come up, say your name. Give me three minutes. I'm sorry, how long is that? Three minutes. That's really a public comment. Okay. Uh, and normally, I mean, you could enforce it. Uh, but traditionally, what we've done, you've got until 1045. Yeah. That's, um, it's up to you. Four and a half minutes. <laughs> well, that, well, it's or you can negotiate an additional <laughs> time. That's what you want to do. We do have till 1045. Well, I don't know. Right. We're going to stick to that. So, All right. Hello. My name is James Slaymaker. My home is 11126 Lakeview Drive. I also own property at 7200 Mound Ridge Road, which is right across the street. I currently serve as president of the University Park Improvement District Board. First off, the University Park and its residents are not against replanting property. Many of us have done it to build homes and secondary structures and plan to continue this practice. But the majority of the residents at the February board meeting requested the University Park Board represent the community proof to protest the Maple Replat request due to the reason behind the request. If this replat is approved, a donkey will be within regulations according to current Riley County planning and zoning. If I understand correctly, this does not follow the Riley County Land Development Regulations accepted in January 2022, the LDR, which I believe all three of you folks signed. Under Section 1.2, Purpose and Intent, quote, number 10, protect landowners from any adverse impacts associated with development occurring on neighboring property. Number 13, prevent secondary effects from land uses that could negatively impact nearby property, unquote. University Park Improvement District is a residential community and believes the Maple Reply request should be denied to prevent the negative impact of the secondary effect of livestock on the property. Livestock is inappropriate and outside the bounds of traditional use of our properties. If this reply request is approved, the community feels our property values will diminish due to the unsightly presence of livestock, manure smell, and donkey noise. The Maple property is currently in violation of Riley County Land Development Regulation with the donkey located on it. When I notified planning and zoning of the donkey advanced on the Maple property, I was informed they were aware and assisting her in replatting re to comply with current Riley County regulations. The planning and zoning department are allowing this violation to continue until this replatting request is approved or denied. The LDR states in selection 1.9 conflict when conflicts arise with third parties, in this case, University Park. This is right out of you guys' document. Quote, these regulations are not intended to revoke or repeal any easement covenant or other private agreement. <laughs> Number two, nothing in these regulations shall modify or repeal any private covenants or deed restriction. Unquote. So, telling the landowner a donkey is allowed if they replant is in direct violation of the covenants that we are, that were in place when the property was purchased and goes against the LDR as I do. The donkey will be a secondary effect from the land use that negatively impacts University Park properties. This replant approval would require University Park to fund legal action to enforce our many covenants of restriction dated 12 June 2001. Item number six, no livestock shall be kept on any lot. This financial hardship on our residential community will only be needed if you approve the replant request. Planning and zoning should not have moved forward with this plan to replant the Maple property with the intention of allowing a donkey when that is a direct violation of the University Park Covenant. That's how I understand it. So I'd be looking here to answer that. <laughs> we've actually started taking legal action on this. The development standards are, quote, to protect and enhance residential neighborhoods, commercial districts, and rural areas by encouraging physical development 
that is of high quality and compatible with the character scale and function of the surrounding area, unquote. There are no other donkeys or livestock in the University Park. Cool. Livestock. The Raleigh County Planning Board has already realized that allowing livestock, including donkeys, is not appropriate in an SF2 development and has put forth recommendations to change that regulation to prohibit them. This replat before the commission today would normally be rubber stamped to confirm the planning board recommendation. We ask you to follow your Raleigh County land development regulations and deny this request or explain today at this meeting why you are not following your document. I look forward to hearing your deliberations concerning these questions and how they apply to this request. So that was as the University Park Board. So as a property owner that owns a property across the street, as an owner of property directly across Mount Ridge, the result of this replat will negatively impact my family with a financial hardship of lower property value, lower quality of life, increased noise pollution, and potentially an odor of livestock manure. My 2024 Riley County appraiser valuation for the Mount Ridge property notice has an increase of $24,850 in appraised value. There is no way that my property directly across the street from the donkey and, and from what's going on is worth $24,850 more. There's just no way. It wouldn't be in your neighborhood. It's not in my neighborhood either. So I have spoken to other homeowners and they intend to take the same action. So basically I'm gonna go see the appraiser after this thing is done, hopefully not. But this is why I'm here as a property owner. So I think I got like 30 seconds left. A lot of these quotes, it's like 398 pages of your document. Most of this stuff is in the beginning. Like in the first verbiage, it talks about covenants and it talks about character of the community. It's not in the end in small print. It's in the front, which, you know, should be a focal point. So we really want some help with this. We really do. And if you can't help us, then I would like to have an answer of why you, in my opinion, you're not following your document. Because if you're not going to follow the document, then change it. Because you lead us to think that, that we got some hope. <laughs> and I've been to two meetings now with some hope. And I'm not a hopeful person. I, I go by written words. So anyway, I'd like it. Yeah. You have four Thank minutes, you. which you ought to offer to the applicant. Can I speak? Yes. Yes. My name is Danielle Maple. My representative is not here today. I have some minor speaking problems, but I'll do my best to speak clearly. So the replats for the building, we're hoping to build a bigger shop after we either remove the other one or do another. It has nothing to do with the donkey. My donkey is an ESA animal. From my understanding, and I might not be correct on this, <clears throat> if you have 0.75 acres, it's enough for a livestock because it gets rounded up. I don't even have to replot to have 0.75 acres. I have 0.94 already. So that's done. Secondly, it's not so your neighbor's responsibility to raise your property values. On another note, the man that was just speaking broke the exact same covenant he misquoted to you. That covenant says you cannot have either livestock or poultry. He has publicly admitted he has, he has had chickens. Tons of people have chickens in University Park, and they have done nothing. They want to try and get an emotional response out of you guys when technically we've paid all our taxes, we did our survey, we've checked all the boxes to do a replat. There's absolutely no reason to not allow it just because some university fart was never ever enforced covenants, whose board members break the very covenants they're upset I'm breaking, think I'm hurting the property value of their rental. It is not your responsibility to raise the property value of your neighbor. Um, on another note, University Park has failed many times when it comes to financial responsibilities. They're going to take me to court with money from our sewage taxes, money that's meant to go help our sewage while they're still dumping beyond EAPA levels of sewage into our lake. The county itself is now funding the lagoon from what I've read on a 2023 report. So I don't know why we didn't listen to them. I just want to build a bigger shed. My donkey is also an ESA animal. My doctor says she has helped me greatly. It's very personal, so I won't explain my conditions for how she helps me, but she does. And it's been wonderful. My donkey was also just used to live right on the other edge of that blue line. You could already hear her. I can also already hear cows mooing every morning because they say no livestock in the park. Well, we're completely surrounded by livestock. Completely. On the entire border of University Park. I'll have to stop you there because the board needs time to issue its decision. Yes. All right. Um, 
So there's not a minute. I can't talk for a quick minute. Well, we've got, we don't have a quick minute. Okay. The board needs <laughs> yeah. to make a decision. Stay on board with it. Uh, we probably have a few questions too, so we're probably going to go over uh, but it's up to the board. Um, <clears throat> explain covenants and the enforcement of covenants. Well, that seems to be the <clears throat> that seems to be the the dividing principle here. Right? You were asking Bob that, correct? Well, let's start with that may turn into a, a legal question too. <laughs> We're going to talk about conflict. The other laws and regulations, notice it says uh, public, the number of places here. So we're talking about state, federal type, you know, laws and regulations, like uh, comparing our environmental to KDHE. Whatever KDHE has in place, we have to follow the kids. We can be more restrictive, but can't be less restrictive. Um, when it comes to private agreements, I want to draw your attention to number three. In no case shall the county be obligated to enforce the provisions of any easements, covenants, or agreements between third parties, as stated. This is a public process. It goes through the process, regardless of what the restrictive covenants are. That has to be enforced privately. We're not, we're not. Uh, depending or the, the action of the boards and the action of the public, not uh, dependent on the description of covenants. He <coughs> mentioned that the, so there's uh, a chance to change the SF2 to not allow livestock. Is that? He mentioned work? this. Uh, we are bringing the, uh, a few different um, amendments to the LDR before the planning course. And now eventually on to the uh, county commission. One of the things that was noted was uh, stock animals. Now, residential livestock, chicken, poultry, and things like that, yeah. But stock animals and the, the smaller lots, zoning districts, is not a good idea. Um, right now, again, it's, it's one acre. You get one stock animal per acre. If you can manage to get one acre, you can have it. So in other words, uh, this three plot, uh, again, a condition of abatement of a violation. Okay, that's just one thing that's going on here. But it, it takes care of it, and that's what's been um, generally acceptable as a method of abatement of a violation. Uh, planning or replanting property, rezoning it, the variance, that kind of thing. So going back to it, um, it's, it's perfectly acceptable. In other words. Um, and going back to the uh, we're, we're wanting to limit the lot, livestock or stock animals to uh, the SF1 zoning district as far as the single family residential. Now, it hasn't been approved yet, hasn't been recommended, it's just been for discussion purposes so far. But that starts with a two acre minimum. And it goes from there. That's tra traditionally what we've had for the last 20 years. It's in the, uh, the large lot, single family residential zoning districts allow stock animals. Because you could plot something. Uh, anything less than 20 acres and rezone it to SF4 or 5 at that time, now SF1. And so you could have quite a bit of room in order to probably have a horse or two and it would be all right. So as of now, though, the, the regulations are allowing, it. not just in the University Park, but everywhere. Okay. The, the question I have is in in the covenants. Um, you know, in your covenants, you're you're not allowing stock animals of any kind. Is that correct? Or poultry. The covenants. Um, I'm sorry. Um, Danielle's right that the way it is listed currently in our covenants says no livestock or poultry. But over the last how many seven years? Um, quite a period of time. Um, University Park has allowed chickens. Um, originally, the Riley County documents didn't allow chickens, but these LBRs, before they were redone, didn't allow chickens in our community. Um, so we've been working towards changing our covenants to allow chickens for quite a while, but we were waiting 
until the LDR in 2022 got actually officially adopted. And um, so we're in the process now of working towards officially redoing those covenants to allow chickens, but not to allow livestock, if that makes sense. It, it has been discussed in the open meetings of the University Park Board that we have agreed to allow poultry and not hoofed animals. And not roosters. And not roosters in accordance with the new Riley County regulation, the 2022 signed document. You know, we have agreed to follow that in open meetings. The community is well aware. And there are multiple people obviously keeping keep the chickens out there. But that covenant is not in effect now. Yes, it is. The, for the covenant, you're just saying that it, the new ones that you're trying to get, uh, you're going to get through new covenants will will only allow poultry, not, you know, but the ones that are in place now allow for of them. Right. We are currently in the process. No, do not allow. Burma. Do not allow. Yeah. No, ma'am. It says no livestock shall be kept on any lot. That's but it also true. says, it also says poultry. There you go. See, that is absolutely true. So, so then why haven't you um, outlawed the poultry that's there now? And you're, you know, you're now you're now you're saying we don't want this donkey, but you're allowing all the poultry. So, so in the open meetings, we have been discussing this and got pretty solid on it in 2022 when the Riley County signed their document. We were postponing a hard decision, but when that document came out, it allowed chickens. And the community, poultry, no roosters, and the community agreed that we accept that. You know, that we want to 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 allow chickens. It is a big deal for us to rewrite our covenants in the community. We couldn't do anything until that 2222 document was, what was done. We intend to update our covenant to reflect many changes. There's 14 of them in there now. We're probably done around five, but it just hasn't been done yet. Uh, it, it will obviously reflect livestock in the in, in the in the new covenant when we rewrite it. It's going to say no livestock, basically hooked animals. Uh, but it will allow chickens and and, and poultry and and uh, no, roosters. no roosters, which is in accordance with it. But, that's not, but nothing. It's we not new covenants yeah. don't. Like I see it says right there. We don't. We are not enforcing. We're not enforcing yeah. covenants. So it's not oh, between the university part. So yeah. The way that I'm reading this, yeah. this is just the standard plot to do um, whatever they're doing. What is it? You know, we're, we're out of that particular discussion, whether it's a discussion currently or going to be decided. Because we're not changing the zoning or anything to it, we're just replanning, replanning, which mm -hmm. we've done. In fact, we did just a week ago <laughs> for, for an accessory building in another correct location. And there's a snake. No, we're, we're, we're done with comments. Okay. <clears throat> oh. So. Well, it seems that, you know, we can't do anything about the covenants, so we have to go with the regulations we have. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, we have and we've done this before. Like I say it's <clears throat> combining lots into one they use as one lot already, but not officially. And that's basically just officially combining them into one lot for a problem. I'd make a motion to approve resolution 032124, acknowledging the approval of the final plan of Maple Heights edition. We plan <clears throat> lots 288, 289, 290, and 291 of edition number one to University Park into a single lot, except easements, right of ways, or licenses as shown on uh, as shown to be dedicated on the final plan. It's determined to meet the requirements of the Riley County Land Development Regulations and Sanitary Code. I would second that. Yeah, it's been moved and seconded to approve resolution 032124, acknowledging the approved final plat of the Maple Heights edition of the plat of lots 288, 289, 290, and 291 of edition uh, number one to University Park into a single lot, except any easements, right of ways, licenses as shown to be dedicated on the final plat. So it was determined that it meets the requirements of the Riley County Land Development Regulations and Sanitary Code. All in favor. Aye. 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 All three, please sign. I have a final round. Thank you, Bob. 
After we're done here, commissioners, we have Amy Mangus. Yes. Give us just a couple of minutes, Amy. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've got some. No, I know. I need to. They never clean them up. They are stinky. I've got them. I've got several. They're quite a ways from the house <laughs> for a reason. <laughs> well, with the wind from the southwest, you have chickens. You got to have a rooster. I mean. <laughs> You gotta have a rooster. It's chicken. Now yeah, wait till they wake up. So we're in the morning. Yeah, try to use a speech to raise awareness about how they were dumping sewage in the lake. Do I have to wait for the beef work so I can file it, or until I receive? No, Bob will get everything done. Then he'll get a hold of you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, sir. We'll be ready as soon as they all get back. You know, I'll be about a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Rich, we have any uh, um, sticky notes or anything? Yeah, stamp over these over here. This is a five dollar charge for for sticking out. Actually, we've got uh, yeah, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's okay. Actually, I've seen really what they do. Jump on your lap, but it's kind of is. So, you have to deal with noises. I don't know. Yes, I, I don't know how that works. <laughs> there, and it's in the there Hello, Amy Mangus, Register Needs. And the following is a brief summary of our revenue figures through three o'clock on March 18th with comparable data for the same time frame in 23. Um, as you can see, we seem to be neck and neck with last year, really. Um, mm -hmm. Our indebtedness, I think, is about 161,000 behind. We've actually recorded more pages, which has increased the the money is collected in all the other funds for an extra 8000 so far. Some um, flats are right on track with last year. Still just three flats of existing lots. Um, we've recorded about 50 more documents this year than last year. <laughs> We're still rescanning our books from 1953 through 69. Joe and I attended Government Day and Coffee at the Capitol in January. Um, I went back for County Day, or I'm sorry, that was in January. Mm -hmm. I went back for County Day in February. And um, we actually had a very good turnout. We were only beat by the Sheriff's Association, but most people attending the oh, association. Um, we're still cross-training employees and sending them for gay classes that we can. <clears throat> our big focus this month is um, updating our COOP and emergency kits. Um, if you're not familiar with COOP, it's mm -hmm. our continuity of operations planning plan. <laughs> and um, we try to update it yearly, but we're really kind of looking at the thing as a whole. And we've picked up our um, driveway kits from Public Works just to check, you know, to make sure everything in there is current. Our contacts are still current. I s confirming agreements with other counties that we had in case, you know, we couldn't set up around here. 
um, ink for hand stampers, so on and so forth. And then tracking our daily revenue loss due to the filing and mortgage registration pay changes is totaling 150957 to date. That's all I have. Thank you for continuing to track that. Yes. That matters on various pieces of legislation the state considers. I really have some interest um, in January from, um, I can't remember the gentleman's name now, PHC. Uh, Jay Hall, probably, or maybe Bruce Clyde. Bruce. Yeah. He actually asked to see the spreadsheet Good. for all the years. So, Good. yes. That's good enough. I'll give him a call. So. Okay. <laughs> Well, they're doing a whole change in, in real estate uh, commission fees throughout the country. So let's listen to a thing the other day. You know, they're going to eliminate the commission being paid for the buyer. You just have one fee, which is going to be lower, so it might make a change in some of this. Yeah, but they don't have to change the interest rate. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, that's an interesting thing. I didn't catch it, catch all of it. Yeah. It's strange times. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Thank Amy. Time for Julie, Commissioner. Yes. I suppose the real estate industry is going to fight it. I'm sure, they will. Big time. <laughs> well, before we start, we need motions. I would make a motion to recess as the Board of uh, County Commissioners and reconvene this Board of County Health. Oh, second. We move a second to recess as the Board of County Commission and reconvene as the Board of County Health. All in favor? Aye. 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 Here's Julie. Hey, good morning. Julie Gibbs with the Health Department. I'm joined by uh, Kaylin Speth, our WIC supervisor, on behalf of this first request uh, for approval to hire a full time WIC dietitian. <clears throat> As you are well aware, our caseload continues to increase with the WIC department most sharply this last year, but really since the pandemic. Um, Kaylin's did a good job of uh, researching the need for this, um, and she's provided you with some uh, information here, really looking at ratios across the state uh, as far as dietitian to clients. We far exceeded that ratio. So uh, in order to... Um, prevent burnout really with our dietitians and uh, we don't want to turn anyone away so to prevent that from happening we need to hire a new full-time dietitian we do have permission from the state WIC office um, to hire a new dietitian um, they'll be able to provide salary benefits for that individual so we have it we'll have it within the budget to do so um, any questions that you have uh, myself or Caitlin can provide that answer what happens if the state decides not to? Have they, they haven't. No. no. Uh, and so the WIC program had received through the continuing resolutions and now the budget through the rest of the fiscal year. Okay. And they, so they have the funding for that. And then they were also awarded an additional $1 million uh, okay. that was requested. So okay. that's not. So that's going to be standard. Yeah. But yeah, the big question to that for a start around the county, it'd be the same as the entire big program. So if the state stopped funding it, you would have to make a decision. Right. You're approving the position at Riley County. Right. So that's a funding source. And so you have to make a decision for this position. Technically, it's a new position. It is. A, that's right. what I want to be clear about. I, mean, I don't have any problems with it. Yeah. I mean, I know. Yeah. It's a new position funded by, but it's the same as every position in WIC. I just... Yeah. No, the state. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, that's a, it's, that, it's not it's not you. It, it's 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 a state law. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. But we have no reason to expect that would happen. But you you would have to make a decision. At that point. Okay. <laughs> Sitting on the um, <clears throat> Veterans and Military Services Committee, I mean, there's a lot of places around the country that are really really debating this idea of with um, communities getting involved with. Um, military installations in this manner. And I just sit back and think, well, we've probably been doing it for quite some time. So I don't need to be part of this conversation and this kind of extends on that. So we're doing it, we're doing it right. And I think that's one of the good solid um, 
collaborative connections that we have and we can be proud of. So I just wanted to throw that in there for good measure. <clears throat> well, I move to approve up in the uh, what job description and to hire a full time with diet, another full time with dietitian. I would second that. <clears throat> The movement seconded to approve the updated uh, WIC dietitian job description and to hire a full time uh, WIC dietitian. All in favor? Aye. 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 All three sign, please. <laughs> you can keep going, Julie. Okay. Yeah. Um, for this next one, I have Dr. Clark with us. Um, he's our clinic coordinator. Um, this is on behalf of a request to extend our one of our medical clerk positions through December of 2024. So this individual, this position was created during COVID uh, with supplemental COVID funds. They do run out um, at the end of June. Um, so we're asking to extend this position through December of this year with workforce development funds. So Jacob has done a great job of uh, providing documentation of why we need this uh, medical work, especially during respiratory virus season, and especially since we opened our walk-in clinic hours. Um, she's greatly um, helped with, with both of those things, and we will be doing a far more outreach as well. Um, so definitely a need for the medical clerk position to continue. Um, so we're asking just for an extension through December. And again, we'll use workforce development funds. Those are the funds that were um, funded to us from the state, divvied out among the programs, um, depending on how many employees they had. We do have permission from the state to use part of the clinic's um, workforce development funds for this position to extend through December. What are your plans post December? Okay. To ask for <laughs> <laughs> this to be a permanent position. Yeah. So yeah, in the but this will come as one of the new positions it requested in the 2025 budget. And I did put that statement in there. Um, so the current dollar amount that's with that, and this is not an ongoing oh, okay. position that you'd be approving today. It would be specific to this extension. Um, and you'll notice, maybe Greg, you already did, that Jacob's numbers and my numbers are different. Um, but I did double check those this morning and they're just a couple thousand dollars off, but it, the right is 24,580, but I believe we have the funding either way, but 3,000 is a good weekend, yeah. Yeah, you have to talk to show notes. That's okay. I mean, it happens because of the number of hours and whether we're doing a whole pay period or half pay period, that's fine. <clears throat> But so this position would be you just approving it to the end of the year. Right. Yeah. I'll be okay with it through the end of the year, but I'm not I'm not approving any new positions. So I'm right. gonna you guys are gonna have to find some other available funds if you want to keep it past the center. I think they have plans to get creative, which was your exact word. Yeah, and I we, was trying we, to we've we've had we've had that conversation for the previous years too, and, and you have. Yeah. Um, well, I would um, make a motion to um, approve extending the part-time temporary clerical position through year 2024 for, uh, for the um, the this, we could, um, medical clerk medical clerk position. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, to be funded by Public Health Workforce Development Grant. I'll second. The movement is seconded to extend the part-time temporary clerical position through uh, fiscal year 2024, funded entirely by a Public Health Workforce Development Grant. <clears throat> All in favor? All, right. All three, please sign. I know we said it in there, but that we won't advertise that position. We don't find it covered. Okay. Uh, this last request is for an out-of-state travel for our vet coordinator, Skylar German, to attend the health promotion conference that's taking place the second week in April. 
we were waiting for the final agenda to come out to make sure that it was worthwhile for her to go. So I know it's coming up very quickly. Um, this conference was attended by Shanika and Tasha, our administrative assistant and our health educator, last year. Uh, they had some great sessions. They brought back some good wellness initiatives and some other ideas that we implemented within the health department. So we looked at this for Skylar to attend, as we do have some funds to spend down through her regional vet grant. There just weren't as many opportunities this year to spend that money. We usually don't have any problems spending that money on trainings and conferences, but um, we had to look for something to, to spend that money on. So she did get permission from the state, from KDHG, um, to be able to go to this conference. Um, there are sessions on health equity, employee and client wellness, program planning, implementation and evaluation, mental health strategies, how data gathered by our EHR can help address disparities, uh, data to inform clinician well-being programs and tips on planning effective health events in the community. Um, and as I mentioned, Shanika and Tasha attended this last year. It was a, a very good conference. It's been going on for many years. I attended it actually when I worked at the university many years ago. Um, so we're hoping to send Skylar to this and it's in Hilton Head. So poor Skylar. <laughs> Any questions on that? I don't think Move to approve rest the out of state travel request from the FEV coordinator to attend the health promotion conference. I would second that. They moved and seconded for the request um, out of state travel for the FEV coordinator to attend the health promotion conference. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 Chair, please sign. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. Have a good weekend. Thanks, you too. Thank you. Okay, your motion first. Um, okay, I would make a motion to uh, recess as a board of county health that we can bring this board of county commissioners. Second, we moved and seconded to recess as the board of county health and reconvene as the board of county commissioners. All in favor? Aye. 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 And for me, I don't have anything else. It had one. That is the end of the box. Hey, listen to the city yesterday talked about all of the funds um now that we've got numbers guaranteed max for the mm -hmm. i know we've got some left over i'd like to see a full accounting though you know what we started with and i know we've gotten interest added in and what we've paid out and i don't because i don't think we've paid out everything uh, from leonardville yet because I know because there were some problems, we've still yeah. just, you know, a list of how much is in there, what we have, still have left in Leonardville, what we have for the EM headquarters and stuff, see what we got left. And according to what they said, I guess you have to have it designated where it's going to be spent this year, spent mm -hmm. next year. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we need to start, you know, kind of looking at that, but need to get final, because there's been a lot of, you know, we've talked a lot of numbers in and out of there, and because I'd gotten the number of what the current total was, but I kept thinking, I think there's still some left on Leonardville that hasn't been paid out. And I know we got those two and then the 800 uh, um, Keiths. Yeah. And just see what we got left to see what. See what we, else we can do. I don't want to wait till December 29th to decide what we're doing. <laughs> we'll be in a talk real short on the agenda. Yeah, but, like, we can get all the numbers, but she keeps a spreadsheet. Oh, I'm sure. I'm not sure. It's there. I'm sure it's not because it's my my thoughts were the same thing. Just get our ducks in a row and just start because looking at it. Yeah, yeah, we've right. got yeah. a big project. Uh, never seen a project that big without change orders and things come up, and so there are contingencies built into there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said, 
Yeah, yeah, don't want to spend every dime. A plan to, you know, if there is some, you know, identify potential of the project and just put right. it on the list that way it's identified. Right. Or right. even more to University Park. I mean, University Park to Keats if we have yeah. to or something. I've been like say, thinking the same thing. Want to see what the final, start looking at it now to see mm -hmm. what our final numbers are so we can. And you know, we'll have to kind of have project to do something with or, interest and all that, too. Yeah. Do we have enough to do something, or is it or mm -hmm. be using that? I think we've still got a lot of stuff left. Wouldn't but, it be too bad if we, I doubt this will be the problem, but if we got a lot of money from water resources and could free up the Keats for something yeah. else. Then so yeah. we, oh, I know. We, we, have, we have lots of <laughs> facilities needs. Right. So, so I think along the same lines, we'll get that. Okay. Mm hmm Okay. Don't forget City County at four at City Offices. Right, okay. I may, I've got, may or may not make it. Okay. I've got mm -hmm. running grandkids this afternoon. They've got too many directions and not enough drivers. <laughs> that is way more important. It's my book anyway. I think I think it's I think it'll work out, but I've got we to clarify that what my skin, what kind yeah, of yeah, is. <laughs> But we need to make a motion to adjourn after this afternoon's meeting. Okay, I'll move to recess <clears throat> after the uh, joint city county meeting in city offices. We actually want to adjourn. Uh, what did I say? You said recess. Move to adjourn no, after. after. That's reading half of the one. I, I, did, well, I thought maybe you intended to go back and become the health department again or something. No, no, okay. Who knows? Cancel that. <laughs> <laughs> Delete that off of that. <laughs> I'm sure it was going to be right, written down the correct way. Okay. Move to adjourn after the city county county meeting and city offices. I would second that. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to adjourn after this afternoon's joint city county county meeting at uh, city offices.